You guys asked, so I'm going to answer. It's Q&A time. One, two, three, four. Hi everyone, hope you're doing well. Thanks for pressing play once again. I'm the man they call Pixel Paul and this is my game room and game collection. And this video is all about you guys asking me questions about anything really. I mean, I left it up to you guys to ask me whatever you wanted, mainly gaming related because that's where my expertise finish, starts and finishes really. So um, yeah, that's pretty much what I got was gaming questions, which is good. Um, plenty of them as well. So honestly, thank you for um, submitting your questions. Um, I have had a quick look through them um, but not really done a huge amount of prep. Uh, it's just the way I roll. Um, so yeah, I, what I've got is I've got questions from Instagram and I've got questions from YouTube. So I'll probably tackle the Instagram questions first, uh, do this in sort of two parts perhaps. And uh, yeah, I think we'll just crack on and get straight into these questions because there's quite a few and I don't want this video to be too long. You do know I can go on a little bit sometimes. So uh, yeah, let's get straight into these questions. So I hope you're all sitting comfortably, grabbed your cup of tea, and we'll get into these questions. Let's have a look. So the first one is from Updoon Left Right. And uh, these are all from Instagram, like I say. If you're not following me on Instagram, drop me a follow. And the same with all these people as well. All these names, I will drop these names into the uh, into the screen so you can see them. Up, down, left, right. And his question, I'm assuming his question, could be her question. Uh, Favourite game stores in the UK? Okay. Favourite game stores in the UK. So, I'm not going to say the obvious, like CEX or game. Um, if I had to be pushed, I would say... You've seen me go to it a few times on this channel. Um, Lee's Games in Morecambe is definitely one of my favourite game stores. I also like Gremlins Games in Lee. Uh, both of these are in the northwest of England. But yeah, Lee's Games, Gremlins Games, both stores, um, I really like them. Um, one that I have come across recently was Manic Miners Toys as well in Warrington. So I really like that store as well. We're not blessed with a huge amount of retro game stores here in the northwest of England certainly not in Manchester anyway it, there's only a few um, and obviously I live a little bit sort of outside of Manchester so I can get to like places like Morecambe and and what have you so but actual dedicated indie stores we don't have a huge amount of them up here in the uh, the northwest sadly um, so yeah I do like Lee's Games it's I've been there so many times and he's such a top bloke so I, I would say Lee's Games is, is one of my favourites it's one thing I'd like to try and do is maybe travel a little bit further afield and go to a different, uh, you know, some different stores as well and check them out. Like Doorway to Darkness, everybody talks about Doorway to Darkness. It looks like a great store, so um, yeah, I would at some point like to go to that store. So yeah, probably if I had to pick one favorite at the moment, yeah, I would say Lee's Games probably. Uh, next question is from Wild Bunny eighty five. What are some of your goals for your collection? For example, hit a certain quantity or collect a certain set, genre or series of games. Okay, so I don't really necessarily have any kind of structure to how I kind of collect games really. I just kind of go where the budget takes me in a way. Um, I just pick up the games I want to buy and play and that I can afford. So I don't have, I never really have thought about wanting to collect like, for example, I've seen some people do it and there's nothing wrong with it. You know, like collect full sets of Wii U games or full sets of PlayStation 3 games, full sets of PS2 games, which I would imagine is nigh on impossible because there's so many PS2 games. So that's something that's never really interested me because I, just, I personally wouldn't want to commit to buying a full set because you end up with loads of rubbish. Um you know, you'd end up with loads of games of Just Dance and FIFA and that sort of thing. And I just, I'd rather spend my money on other things, really. So achieving like a full set isn't necessarily something for me. I would, there are maybe a couple of sort of sets of games, perhaps. So I have been on a bit of a wipeout, um, 
I don't know what the word is, uh, Wipeout Obsession perhaps uh, recently. So I'd like to maybe get all the Wipeout games. Um, I'm only missing a couple, Wipeout 64 being one of them. So maybe something like that. Sort of small groups of games perhaps I quite like doing. I quite like getting those kind of games. I think the only time I've sort of purposely set out to, to, to get a set of games was probably the Tomb Raider Legend set. Meant partly because it was so cheap as well um, and there were so many to sort of chase after so I did quite enjoy doing that but as far as plans for the collection yeah it's just whatever I can find at a nice price that I want and that I can fit in and that is the big issue at the moment I am starting to run out of room specifically really with the PlayStation stuff I have run out of room for PlayStation stuff at the moment so I suppose collection goals is to possibly change this and make this a bit bigger and or just be able to fit more in so we'll see how that goes but yeah great question thanks for that wild bunny uh, next question is from kai Mathy, friend of the channel excellent youtuber as well please check him out and um, his question is i'm going to ask a boring behind the scenes question um what do you use to record and edit with i'm always inter interested to know what other youtube users use okay so it's not a boring question it's quite an interesting question uh, it might be a boring answer possibly because i've been doing this youtube adventure if you like for uh well did it started it in october last year so it's not far off sort of 10 months and I, when i first started it it was very sort of bare bones so i had my phone uh camera uh, and it's the same phone that I'm using now. It's a Samsung A53. What is it? 2022, something like that. So it's nothing special. It's not a, it's not a super cam, super camera on the phone or anything like that. It just does what it needs to do. So yeah, I use that for the recording. I also use that for everything else as well. Really, the only other bit of kit really I use is my little mic here, which you can see. Again, it's nothing special. It's just something I got off Amazon, um, sort of like in a mid-range kind of price. I can't remember how much it was, but it was no more than sort of thirty pound. Uh, NJSJ. I don't even know if that's a, a reputable make or not, but it does the job. And actually, it made a lot of difference. Actually, I think with the quality of the sound from my early videos. Um, in terms of editing, I use Canva, uh, the app Canva for um, thumbnails, and I use UCut to edit and put the music in and all that sort of thing. So. Yeah, there's probably better things out there. For me, personally, doing everything on my phone, they do the job um, to a certain level, to an acceptable level, I hope. Um, but yeah, those are the things I use. And I don't really use anything else. I have a couple of uh, mics that I use for maybe when I'm outside and record stuff outside. Um, and I have like a little stand and a ring light and just the usual stuff, really. But honestly, it's nothing particularly expensive or professional <laughs> certainly not professional anyway um but yeah that's that's the stuff i use okay so thanks for that question uh, next one is from our sumo 41 if you could play one game from your collection for the rest of your life what would it be okay um oh what a question okay um one game for the rest of your life um i'll go for a I'll go for the obvious question, obvious answer perhaps, and I would probably say something like Tetris because, I mean, I've had Tetris on my Game Boy for over thirty, you know, over thirty years now, and every time I pick up my Game Boy and Tetris, I can just dive straight into it. I don't think you ever get bored of playing Tetris. I don't think. So yeah, probably something like that. If I was going for something, you know, like a bit more uh, spectacular, possibly, you know, a world you could get lost in. Maybe something like Horizon Zero Dawn, just because I love that game so much and you can just wander around in that game and do as much or as little as you want, I suppose. So, yeah, if there was one game, it probably would be Tetris, I would say. Okay, next question is from State of PlayStation. What game would you most like to have a sequel? And what movie would you like a game adaptation of? Okay, sequels. So, all right. Everybody has dream sort of sequels, don't they? Um, part of me wants to just say Half-Life 3. Half I want Half-Life 2 to get its sequel, finally, and get some closure on that series to a degree. Um, 
I'd, Beyond Good and Evil, perhaps. I suppose technically that does have a, a sequel because it's supposed to be on its way. Still. Um, one that springs to mind straight away is Freedom Fighters. I'd love a, I would love to have seen a, a sequel to Freedom Fighters, which came out on the PS2 and Cube and Xbox. I loved that game. It was just just uh, you know from that gen. It was just one of my favourite games. Um, it was supposed to have a sequel, but it was cancelled. Um, so possibly Freedom Fighters. If you're asking about maybe a more recent game, possibly Evil West, because. I really enjoyed that game. It's such an old school, almost like Xbox 360, PlayStation 3 era game where it was just a one off. But this, I just felt like there was quite a lot of potential with that game um, and I really enjoyed it. So, yeah, I suppose there's potential for an Evil West game. I don't know whether it sold well enough for it to, to warrant a sequel, but I, I enjoyed it and think, yeah, I'd play a sequel to that. Definitely. So, I'll, yeah, I'll say Evil West. I'll give that a, a shout for a sequel. Um, as for movie adaptations, so let me get this for the right way around. What movie would you like a game adaptation of? Because most people sort of say, what game would you like a movie of? But this is, what movie would you like a game adaptation of? And that's quite that's quite good, actually. I quite like that. So, movie game. Uh, okay, I'm going to go... Yeah, I don't know why this has just sprung into mind. So, a game that's just sprung into my mind with that is SOS The Final Escape. So, I'm... I'd like to see maybe a game based on some sort of like disaster film, perhaps. Uh, maybe like the Pos Poseidon Adventure. That sounds like quite a good game, actually. If you've never seen the Poseidon Adventure, it's about a massive boat which turns upside upside down, and people have to try and escape from uh, the you know just escape. And yeah, that actually sounds like a video game kind of concept, doesn't it? So maybe like something like that, the Poseidon Adventure. <laughs> it's a bit left field, possibly, but. Um, yeah, Poseidon Adventure would be, I think, would be quite a decent game. I don't know if anyone ever played Hydrophobia, which was uh, an Xbox 360 arcade game, which was supposed to have a couple of sequels, but never happened. But I really enjoyed Hydrophobia. So you could make it in the same sort of vein as that, perhaps. So, yeah, I'll I'll go for something like that, Poseidon Adventure, or maybe even like Towering Inferno. Disaster movie, something disaster movie. Just because it'd be a little bit different, it's, you know, it's not a shooting game or anything like that. It'd be quite sort of puzzly, perhaps. Um, so yeah, uh, Poseidon Adventure or Towering Inferno. Yeah, we'll go with that. I quite like that. Good question. Good questions. Okay. PlayStation Classics. Um, he asks, or she, sorry. Uh, what are some recent games that you've platinumed? Okay, so when you say platinumed, I'm assuming like PlayStation games, obviously. Um... So I'm not a massive trophy hunter. Um, I kind of... Occasionally I am. There are some games where I will go for trophies and uh, achievement points and some stuff like that. But I'm not a massive you know, trophy hunter. Um, I think I was probably a bit more maybe during the Xbox 360 era and I was always chased, I was, was sort of chasing achievement points during that era. But since then I've kind of... I think probably it's a time thing because I have so a lot less time to play games these days sometimes i just want to play it and get it done enjoy it and then move on to the next so i mean don't get me wrong i totally get why people trophy hunt you know it extends the life of a game you get more value for money but for me i just kind of like to get through a game and then just focus on the next one so i don't tend to hunt for trophies that much i'm trying to think what the last game i platinumed was and i want to say something like it was either Spider-Man on the PS4 or Ghost of Tsushima, I think, on the PlayStation 4. Um, I platinumed Astro's Playroom on the PlayStation 5, but that doesn't really count, does it? Because everybody does that. So I think I've got a feeling it was probably Ghost of Tsushima I, I, I was the last game that I platinumed. Um, yeah, I think so. Uh, next question is Collector Catharsis. How long have you been collecting and what will you do when you run out of space? Well, I've pretty much run out of space now. Um, but how long have you been collecting? So I started playing and sort of collecting, I guess, around 1992. Um, when I got my Game Boy and I built up a bit of a Game Boy collection and then SNES collection. Um, and then I had to sell um, my original sort of game collection, if you like. Um, for for reasons uh, about sort of money and space and that sort of thing, so I probably st started again and built most of this collection 
uh, from around 2021, I would say, something like that. Um, yeah, started to collect again. So yeah, it's to, this collection started in 2021 and has gradually, um, to begin with it gradually built up and then moved into this room um, and it kind of exploded and is still continuing to explode because, you know, there's just games. I'm bringing in games all the time and I am starting to have to think about how I configure this room and, you know, whether I need a bit more furniture to go in. So as far as what will I do when I run out of space, I will make space. That is that I will make space because I just love collecting. It's an addiction. No, it's not an addiction. It's just a hobby. It's something I love doing. So I will continue doing it, um, but I will just have to make more space at some point. So we've got a few more Instagram questions. Inked Retro, uh, what bad game surprised you the most and you actually enjoy? Bad game that I enjoyed the most. Hmm. Um, bad game. Uh, oh god, that's a tough question. That one, because so, a bad game is usually a bad game, isn't it? But I know what you mean. You can you can enjoy a bad game. I would say possibly uh, Tomb Raider, Angel of Darkness, the Angel of Darkness on PlayStation Two. So that is all right. So I know some people don't think it's a bad game, but it's not a great game, and it was glitchy and buggy as hell when it first came out. Um, and I did play it, and I did finish it. Um, and it is a bad game, really, um, compared to the other Tomb Raider games. But it did obviously strike a chord with me because I think I've said it before in another video. This that was the first Tomb Raider game I'd ever played. I've not played any of the earlier ones, so I obviously enjoyed it that much. Uh, I think Lara probably had something to do with it too. Um, but yeah, I would say probably that one because I was like trying to want it to like it when I was playing it, even though I knew it was quite bad. So I would say, yeah, that's not a bad answer, I think. Tomb Raider, The Angel of Darkness. I'll go with that. Good question of that. Um, next question is from, it's more of a suggestion, perhaps. Retro Gamer 1982. How about doing a versus video or something? The same game for different consoles and which version you prefer? Yeah, that's quite a good idea. I like that idea. Um, again, it could, you know, sort of comparing the couple of versions of, say, Freedom Fighters, which I mentioned before, I could do something like that. Um, so yes, I will bear that in mind. I will put that in my little notebook, which I carry around with me when I go game hunting, and it has YouTube ideas and all sorts. So yeah, versus videos, quite like that idea. Good suggestion, mate, thanks for that. Next question is from, and I'm sorry, I never know how to pronounce your full uh, Instagram username, Sammy Sokononen. Ooh, sorry if that's wrong, but I always think of you as Sammy. Um, most difficult game you have encountered and did you beat it? Most difficult game you have encountered and did you beat it? I'm not... <laughs> I'm quite a lightweight these days, I must admit. Um, I'm not a big fan of games like you know, the Souls games and that sort of thing. Um, again, partly it's a time thing. I just haven't got time to grind away at these sort of really difficult games. I'm not saying I like games that are just, you know, you just breeze through in a couple of hours. Um, but yeah, I'm not, I'm not a massive fan of Dark Souls games and that sort of thing. Um, I just can't do them. They're just too hard for me. Returnal. Oh gosh, Returnal. Yeah, I would say Returnal is one of the hardest games as well. Um, so those kind of roguelike games. Um, yeah, nothing prepared me for... I'd not played a roguelike game before. and I was so looking forward to Returnal. And <laughs> that first evening of playing that game, it was the most frustrating night because I really wanted to just get into this game. That was the first PlayStation 5 proper game that I got as well. And I just couldn't get past the first uh, like biome or whatever it was. Um, and I still haven't beaten that game. Still haven't beaten it. Um, I think the hardest game I've beaten... I don't know, possibly Super Pro Protector, maybe. Um, I know people will be going, well, that's not difficult. You're not hardcore enough. Well, sorry, I'm proper, probably not. Um, but yeah, Super Pro Protector. Um, I think I beat that when I was like, I don't know, 13, 14, something like that, on the hardest difficulty level. That was quite an achievement, actually. So yeah, I'll say Super Pro Protector, because nothing else springs to mind. Um, yeah, we'll go with that. Amazing game, that one. Do love Super Pro Protector. Uh, and this is the last question from Instagram. And this is another Instagram username that I cannot pronounce. Zabuza Protoss. Um, 
Who was the first ever game that take your mind? Who was the first ever game that take your mind? Okay, so I'm not quite 100% sure what you quite kind of mean with that question. Um, the first ever game that take my mind. Um, right, I think I know what you mean. So, I mean, Tetris, obviously, the first game I sort of ever played on a Nintendo console, obviously got me hooked on gaming. Um, Mario 64, because of just how sort of revolutionary it was at that time, having been playing Game Boy and Super Nintendo and then seeing Mario fully realised in 3D with, you know, really sort of control system that was absolutely bang on and made for 3D. So, yeah, Mario 64 was, you know, sort of blew my mind, I guess. Um, possibly even Gears of War 1 on the 360. Um it was my sort of first introduction to HD gaming, perhaps. I remember just going through some of the early uh, campaign and that and looking at the scenery and just thinking, wow, this looks so much different to, you know, your, your N64 games or your um, PlayStation 2 games. The, the sort of level of detail blew my mind at that point. So, yeah, possibly I'll go with uh, something like that, Mario 64 or, or Gears of 1. I hope that answered the question, but uh, if not, uh, just message me on. Uh, Instagram or in the comments and just you know let me know what you actually meant so um yeah so those were the questions from Instagram as I said before if you're not following me on Instagram feel free to drop a uh, follow on my Instagram account um, I put out content on there every single day uh, as far as I can um, and it's just mainly pictures of like this collection really so hopefully you if you like this channel you'll enjoy that uh, Instagram account as well I'm gonna grab uh, a quick cup of tea because this one's gone cold and we will look at the questions that I got from you guys on YouTube. Okay, so I've got a fresh cup of tea and we'll go with the questions from the YouTube world, you guys on YouTube. So the first one is, and sorry, if you're not already subscribed to this channel, uh, if you can hit the subscription button, that would be appreciated. We're nearly at 1K. Yes. Um, so the first question is from Jackson Pizzolato. Jackson Pizzolato. Again, apologies if I uh, mispronounce any of these names. Question is, question for we Pixel Paul, what video game world would you travel to? What video game world would I like to travel to? Oh gosh, where do you start? Um, <laughs> so, so this isn't strictly a video game perhaps, but I, especially when I was a kid, I always wanted to go to the grid in Tron. I don't know why, just because it's so different, I guess. But the grid in Tron is is a world I'd love to explore, perhaps. Um, so yeah, maybe that. Um, I'd always loved. I'd love Mass Effect Two is my favorite game of all time, um, and one of my favorite parts of the Mass Effect games is being on the Normandy spaceship um, and just kind of spending your time wandering around that ship, talking to people exploring different corners and areas of that ship so perhaps I, I, yeah i wouldn't mind doing that maybe something like that going on the normandy in the mass effect mass effect games and um, that'd be quite good so yeah something like that the grid or the normandy um or just somewhere nice and quiet and relaxed and peaceful and has plenty of cups of teas and i don't think they've made a game of that yet maybe animal crossing but I don't think I'd fit in there. Okay, good question though. Thanks for that. Uh, next one is from Daniel Sanford1172. Hey, Pixel Paul, my question to you is, of all the games you have ever played, even going back to your earliest years of gaming, which game would you like to see get directly ported, but maybe with slightly better graphics, and which game would you like to see get totally remade and reimagined to fit the current gen consoles? So as a port that is kind of maybe improved on, um, I think I think it's about time. Um, and they have done a few sort of remasters recently, but I would love to see Nintendo um, almost remaster Mario sixty four. Um, just keep the same core game, same you know everything about the game. Pretty much the same, the control system and everything like that. But maybe with like Mario Odyssey level graphics. Um, yeah, something like that. Mario 64 is just such a classic game. You could argue it doesn't need updating, it doesn't need changing. But maybe just giving it that nice, new, fresh 
more modern look perhaps uh, take it away from those angular um, edges of like the N64 and the fog and that sort of thing. So yeah, maybe maybe a, a, just a complete graphical overhaul of uh, Mario 64 would yeah I'd, I'd love to see that. And then um, which game would you like to see get totally remade and reimagined? Um, so I'll say <laughs> I'm going to say it again. Maybe Freedom Fighters. Um, but also, and I'm probably looking at the PlayStation 2 era here because I personally don't think there are many games that really genuinely need uh, these you know, remasters. There's so many remasters of games and a lot of them are like 360 and PlayStation 3 era games and you just sort of think, does they really need them? Um, so I'm looking at sort of PlayStation 2 uh, and the one that jumps out, I'll grab it actually, is uh, this one. I think this is a really slept on game. I just think it was really good when it first came out. It was in competition with another game that came out at a similar sort of time. It was a similar type of game. This was a bit more cerebral, less action orientated. Um, and it's Second Sight. And I think that would make for a pretty decent sort of remaster. I'd love to see them have another go at that. Um, because I've, I just think it's a game that really deserves um, a bit more attention from newer gamers perhaps so yeah i'll go for second sight just because i really enjoyed that game um really great twist in it and uh yeah i think that would make quite a good decent sort of remake if you like so yeah good question that one thanks for that daniel next question is from uh eam e tube eam tube sorry i don't know how to pronounce that eam tube hey pixel paul what are some of the absolute holy grail items you'd love to own, whether it be a game, limited edition, or console. Um, I suppose we're talking almost like holy grails there, aren't we? Um, like I said before, I'm not sort of driven by specific games. I, I just like to find games that I want, which is the same thing, I guess. But the first one that springs to mind is um, Batman Returns on the Super Nintendo. I do have a cartridge only version of that but i would love to have and i've always wanted that boxed version a fully boxed complete version of batman returns just because i love that game so much um so yeah something like that perhaps i yeah i class that as a holy grail but for me and um, the last story on the wii um which i know is not massively expensive at the moment it's i think it's one of those games that goes up and down it, i it, i've seen it as much as sort of 65 pounds seen it drop to about 45 pounds i think at the moment it's about 55 pounds so it just goes up and down all the time and i've never taken the plunge to buy that game and i really should life's too short you just it's not that expensive it's not ridiculously sort of three figure sum is it so at some point i would love to pick that up as well um i'd love to add a dreamcast back into my collection as well so i had a dreamcast back in the day um sold it off regretted it instantly I had some amazing games on that Dreamcast as well. Um, but yeah, I'd love to pick up a Dreamcast again um, and maybe start collecting for that again one day. Um, so yeah, I'd, I'd sort of one of those maybe. Um, but Batman Returns, last the last story in a Dreamcast perhaps. Okay, so the next question is from Retrohead od 3 cu uh, who has a great YouTube channel. Again, make sure you give him a follow. A great collection and he knows his stuff as well. Um, hi mate, my question is what is your favourite Metroid game? Metroid game. Metroid game. So my fave obvious answer is probably Metroid Prime. Um because I do I do like Metroid Prime. It's a fantastic game. Definitely one of my favourites that. Oddly enough, I think my favourite Metroid game <clears throat> is maybe the less or the least obvious answer to this. Because I really love Metroid 2 on the Game Boy, the original Metroid 2. I know it was kind of remade a little bit um, on one of the later handhelds, but yeah, I, I really like Metroid 2. It was the first Metroid I'd played. It just has this really strange, odd atmosphere. There's very little in the way of music in it, and it's very atmospheric, and it's almost exactly what you expect a Metroid game to be. You know, that sort of almost very sort of lonely, um, atmospheric kind of... Um, just been lost in a maze of caverns and that sort of thing and um, yeah I just I don't know 
it's my go-to Metroid game for some reason. I do love playing playing that game. So yeah, I'll go for that just because of the weird atmosphere that that game gives. Uh, next question is from Corbin's Combo. Thanks, mate. Um, also on uh, Instagram as well. All right, mate, that's not my question. Also, beforehand, just want to say thanks for all the help you've given me over on Insta. You are very welcome. I am no guru on Instagram by any stretch of the imagination, but if you ever want any advice on Instagram accounts and posting, and I'm more than happy to try and help and pass on what I know. So you're very welcome. Uh, my question is, what is your favourite box art or best looking game in your collection? Best, now I'm gonna do a video on this, so this would be giving it away a little bit. Um, but it's not gonna be for a while, so um, possibly won't be. I won't tell you what my actual actual favorite video game cover is, because like I said, I wanna do a video on probably one of my top 10 uh, cover arts, that sort of thing. So I won't say what my actual favorite is. I'll say what one of, one of my favorites is. Um, again, I'll go and grab it. So. It's a game that I only picked up not that long ago. Um, and I've got to find it first, so bear with me. And it's always on the top shelf as well. It's always on the top shelf. So this is one that I picked up not that long ago. And it is just a really amazing cover. I love it. The artwork on it is spectacular. Uh, and it's infamous special edition. I just think that is such an eye-catching cover. Um, and I do, I'll do. i try and do it without glare. You've probably all seen it before anyway. But yeah, that is one of my favourite covers. I just think it's really eye-catching and colourful. Um, and the actual inside cover arts are really good as well. On the sleeve. Again, can't see that that well. But yeah, I just, yeah, infamous um, special edition PlayStation 3. I'll, I'll give you that one for now. But I am going to do a video on top 10 uh, cover art. So I won't say what my actual full first favourite is, possibly because I don't actually know myself yet, um, but I do like that one. So thanks for the question, mate. Next question from YouTube is from Jamie King 1090 Hey Pixel Paul, my question is, what would you like to see different when they launch PlayStation 6? And what would you call it other than PlayStation 6, which is getting a tad boring? I agree. What would I like to see on the next play PlayStation then? Okay, the next PlayStation. Backwards compatibility. That would be my first wish on a wish list for the PlayStation 6 or whatever we're going to call it. Um, yeah, backwards compatibility it would just be amazing if they could properly... If you could just have a PlayStation that you could whack a PlayStation 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 disc into. Can you imagine that? Chances are it's not going to happen because... I don't know, chances are it probably won't even have a disk drive. So yeah, that won't happen, but it would be my wish to have proper old school backwards compatibility that you could just throw any game into it. Um, another thing that I've always thought, certainly sort of since the sort of PlayStation 4 era, is having like a, a touchscreen on the DualSense now. I just, not, not a touchscreen, but a proper display on the, on the, on the front of the pad. Um, so I know you have the touch screen, but a proper sort of display that has, I suppose, a bit like the Switch, you know, when it's in handheld mode, it's a d display on your controller almost, isn't it? Something like that. I'm surprised that no one's ever properly kind of done something like that. Maybe it would make it too expensive. Maybe it would make the controller too heavy. Maybe uh, the power that you would need to run that is too much. Not sure, but some sort of additional interface on the actual controller itself on the dual sense i'd like to see something like that i think you could use that in you know so many different ways i'm straight away thinking of like an aliens game and having the motion tracker perhaps on the on a screen on on the controller that would be awesome um you could have things like yeah ammo count or something like that i don't know so yeah i'd go for something like that as for what i would call it oh right so I mean, you'd have to keep the PlayStation name, the PlayStation brand, um, because they aren't going to ditch that anytime soon. But you could maybe go down like the alphabet route, maybe. I mean, you're not going to call it PlayStation A, B, but maybe something like 
PlayStation Alpha, PlayStation Beta, PlayStation Gamma. That's the next one, isn't it? PlayStation Delta. I like the sound of PlayStation Delta. That's quite cool. So maybe something like that, perhaps. Um, but yeah, they aren't going to drop the PlayStation name. But maybe something like that, perhaps. So they could start, you know, go get away from numbers and go with letters. PlayStation Alpha. That's quite a good name as well, actually. So um, yeah, we'll go with that. Um, and then the next question, and this is the last question, you'll be glad to hear, uh, is from Nice Cuppa Sam. Um, Pixel Paul, I would ask, what's your future goals for your channel? Also, if also if you have to sing to every song you hear or dance to everyone, which would it be? I did say any question. Um, but that's quite a nice question to finish on, actually. Um, so what are your future goals for your channel? Future goals for this channel are to essentially just keep on enjoy doing it. I, I just want to carry on doing it for as long as I can. Um, but I want to be able to carry on and enjoy doing it as well, which I am doing at the moment. There have been occasions where it's been quite sort of stressful or I struggle to fit them in, you know, the recording and editing and that sort of thing, which doesn't take masses amount of time, but enough time. Um, especially when things like Euro, the Euros, uh, the football has been on, it's been hard to sort of watch that and get videos out. So, um, and also specific games being at specific times, you sort of having to reschedule videos, which I have had to do with this one. Um, but in, in general, I enjoy doing this channel. So yeah, future goal is to carry on enjoying it, uh, to carry on collecting um, and just carry on sort of providing that variety as well. I don't want to be uh, a YouTube channel that just goes down the rabbit hole of just game hunting every single week, you know, uh, here's uh, rows of CEX shelves, here's rows of game, here's rows of uh, games in a game store, here's what I bought, here's what I bought, here's what I bought, bye. I just don't want to do that every week. Don't get me wrong, I do game hunting videos, don't I? But I, I want to keep a bit of variety as well because otherwise I will just burn out. I will run out of, I, you know, I'll run out of money, I'll run out of room, I'll run out of games to pick up. I think there's only so long you can do that. So I'll, if I can keep uh, the channel as varied as I can, try and sort of bring new ideas into it as well. Like I say, just try, try and sort of do, you know, as much variety on these channels. I get it. I know game hunting videos are the most popular. Um, the, the videos that I do that are away from that don't do quite as well as those game hunting videos. But I'm fine with that because I just want to do a variety of things with the channel. So, <clears throat> um, but people used to ask me the same sort of thing about my Instagram account as well. What, what are your plans with Instagram? Well, I don't know. You can't really make plans, I don't think, for Instagram. It's just, it will be what it will be. It will be, um, it's successful or not successful. You'll enjoy doing it or you won't enjoy doing it. Um, it's hard to sort of say, give people a, an idea of what you want to do with something like that. Um, and I guess I just want to just see how it goes, which is... Like exactly like I said with Instagram, we'll just see how it goes. We'll see where it goes. We'll see where it ends up. If it blows up and it does well, then great. I'll just keep doing what I keep doing. Um, if it doesn't, well, I'll probably keep doing it anyway because I just enjoy doing it. Um, the only other thing of sort of future goals is I wouldn't mind at some point trying to make this look a little bit more professional. I'm trying to improve. I'm trying to be more kind of like engaging, if you like, as well, and that sort of thing. Um, I'm not a natural in front of the camera. I'm quite introverted. So possibly trying to get a bit more of my personality out. Um, I don't have much more personality there, if I'm honest. Um, but yeah, maybe just making the whole sort of production of these videos a little bit better. I might have to look at getting better gear, uh, maybe even invest in sort of like, at some point, possibly a PC or a laptop that I can do proper editing on and that sort of thing. I don't know. It's We'll just see how this goes. And I'm quite happy with where it is right now. Um, and the last bit, sing. Yeah, it'd have to be sing because nobody wants to see me dance. Nobody has ever seen me dance, including when I did my uh, first dance with Mrs. Pixel, um, which wasn't really a dance. It was just kind of standing in the middle of a room doing this with her. Um, so nobody wants to see me dance. So uh, every song, yeah, I would sing every song. Um, and even that's a stretch because you don't want to hear me sing either. So that was good. That's all the questions. Thanks for... Uh, 
thanks everyone to you know for sending those questions through. I got a lot more than I was expecting to. Um, this is the second Q&A I'd done. I did one last year, I think it was, and I said I was going to do these every quarter. That didn't happen. Um, so maybe every six months, perhaps, we'll do it again at some point. Uh, but yeah, some really good questions there. I really enjoyed sort of thinking about those and uh, hopefully making some sense with some answers. Uh, but again, apologies if I've been mispronouncing names wrong. Um, but yeah, thanks to you all for that. And uh, another quick sort of thank you to everybody for the support that you've given the channel over the last uh, eight or ten months. It's you know been magnificent. I just I'm surprised at how quickly things have kind of grown with this channel. Um, completely at times overwhelmed with it, but um, like I say, I, I am still enjoying it. So uh, yeah, thanks to you guys for 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 sort of subscribing, for commenting, for sharing, for liking. I I'd massively appreciate it. I should give more shout outs to people um because people do a lot for me in this channel. You know, I get, do get shout outs on other channels. Uh, Kai Maffey uses my face on his videos quite often as well. Um whether that attracts people to your channel, I don't know, mate. But um yeah, I don't mind that at all. Um so yeah, just a massive thank you to everybody once again. And um, if you're not subscribed to the channel, if you could kindly just subscribe, uh, click that button. It's completely free. So, you know, give it a go. Um, and uh, if you do, thank you very much. That's the end of this one then. Um, thanks again to everybody. And I will see you on the next one.